We welcome you uh, to the sermon today. I have read a nice uh, word which I would like to tell you. It's a word from George Bernard Shaw. It is said that uh, George Bernard Shaw has said this. Humans prefer to be ruined by praise than to be corrected by criticism. Humans prefer to be ruined by praise than to be corrected by criticism. <coughs> and I think this is the reason why we have come here. Not to receive praise only, or to hear praise, to listen to praise, but also to be corrected by criticism. As far as I know, the Word of God also says that uh, it is our criticize. It's a good beginning when we have come today here to listen to the Word, to be corrected. The topic is as follows. You should, you should long for, you should desire. Or you, or you should long for. For what? This will follow. You should desire or you should long for. What? What do we insert here? Which, what is meant by to long for? What should we long for? What should we desire? Many would maybe have the tendency to say you should not long for this or that. You should not desire this or that. We will see. How do I, did I get to choose this topic for today? Uh, recently, I got a new Bible translation and I started reading the foreword. <clears throat> and immediately when I was reading the first sentence, I was stuck. Uh, there was a word which struck me. I had to put the Bible aside. And this word is, um, is uh, keeping me busy for weeks already. This word is describing a perspective, uh, is a perspective or is, uh, this word is uh, describing a direction that uh, people who believe in Jesus should have a sight. It has to do, it's dealing with desire. And the question is, uh, should Christians or Messianic Jews desire something or long for something or wish something? I could tell you immediately what this word means, but since I have to preach until 1.20, you will see in the end what it means. And as always, we cannot deal with this topic pr profoundly, uh, really profoundly but only touch the meaning of this today. And it's for you to dig deeper into the word for yourself. Before we start, I want to hint, I want to tell you, please think for yourself while you are listening to the word. 
a good while preparing this uh, sermon I had um, help I found help from um, two articles some information I mentioned them because I can really recommend these articles one article with the title desire an article on desire. The author is Anton Kufati. It was published in 2009, and you can find it in the internet um, www.vibilex.de. That's the website. It's from the uh, Scientific Bible Dictionary www.vibilex.de. The title is Desire and the author is Anton Kufati. And then I found another article on the website of the Jüdische Allgemeine. The article is from Daniel Neumann and it was published on 20th of June this year with the title, You Shall Not Desire, You Shall Not Covet. I'm not sure if these articles are published in other languages, but they are uh, in German. Now we start. What does it mean, begehren, desire? And it's interesting when we look for the definition of the word that we find more uh, synonyms or more meanings of the word. And so I looked it up at www.duden.de. And all the definitions we are talking about here are from duden.de, from the website. And there it says it means desire or, or the pursuit of someone or something. It's a wish, just a wish, or the desire or the pursuit of someone or something. And according to the author Kufati, it's a behavior or action that aims to temporarily or permanently acquire an object that is perceived as desirable because it is precious. First, it seems to sound very general and neutral, neither positive nor negative. It seems to be, at first sight, very neutral, very general. I repeat what the author Kufati has said. Desire is a behavior or action that aims to temporarily or permanently acquire an object that is perceived as desirable because it is precious. And there we see already an important point. It's about our own perception. It's about our own perception. 
that means uh, desirable can have something to do with perception. That means that it, something can be precious and we perceive it as precious or we do not perceive something as precious. Or it can be precious, but we ourselves do not perceive it as something precious and desirable. Or the other way around, something is not at all precious, uh, but we think that the thing is precious. That is why we missed that there is a catch on the matter. We didn't really see the mistake. We didn't really see the catch on the matter. And it's interesting to see that this kind of desire is directed to ourselves. Then I would like to mention some synonyms, uh, synonyms which I found in Duden.de, synonyms for desire. For instance, the word desire has many meanings, can have many meanings, many synonyms. Here are some I mentioned. The need, for instance, urge, so desire can be the need or an urge or or even covetousness, covetousness, or it can mean greed or lust or craving. Or as a picture like hunger or thirst. It can also contain the meaning of yearning or longing, yearning or longing, or it can mean demand or simply a wish. And uh, for each and every of these words, I looked at the definition. What does it mean? We start with the word begierde, covenant, cov covetousness. This is a passionate desire. Emotions are uh, are contained in this passionate desire. It is aimed at enjoyment and satisfaction at the fulfillment of a wish or possession. It's connected with emotions, covetousness. The word lust in the youth a speech, uh, young people say Bok. I don't have any um, Bok to do something. <laughs> It's, about, it's a desire for the satisfaction of a desire, of a wish. Yeah. 
the satisfaction of a desire, directed to the satisfaction of a desire. And then the word belust, which means cravings. There is a sudden desire in someone for certain sensual, especially bodily pleasures. For instance, for um, a craving for the beloved food or for the favorable food. Meaning there is a sudden desire in someone for certain sensual, especially bodily pleasures. And then we talk about Sehnsucht. It's a uh, longing. Sehnsucht is longing, heartfelt, a heartfelt, painful desire for someone or for something lacking, for something lacking or far fetched. It's a heartfelt or painful desire for someone or something lacking or far-fetched. And this is something in me, in my inner being, a feeling in my inner being. And it's also connected with emotions, it can be very emotional. And then the word Wunsch, wish, a wish is a desire that someone harbors or expresses whose fulfillment is hoped for more than through their own efforts to achieve it. Desire that someone harbors or expresses whose fulfillment is hoped for more than through their own efforts, efforts to achieve. That's a, a wish. A I knew at the beginning that it would be not easy for our translators to translate the meaning of this. So we see what can you desire It's either directed, desiring is either directed to a person or a thing. And some things are mentioned in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, uh, that are desirable, for instance, de desirable objects, precious objects. Can be food or clothes or silver or possession or vineyards and if you want to read if you want to read what is desirable about precious objects that are desirable then I recommend you to read about Solomon in the Bible Solomon is described as a rich man he had a lot of possessions and he was very rich And his, and his desire for people was expressed in the following way. He had indeed 700 mothers of law. Really, he had 700 wives or women, so he had 700 mothers of law. 
I see that you are following me. That's good. It's also interesting to see that Kufati writes that desire to desire belongs to the human existence. And, and he talks about legitimate desire, what should be, what should find fulfillment. The legitimate desire should find fulfillment. And in Genesis, when the Bible talks about the creation of the world, these things that God did were desirable. And those things we, that we should not have were supposed to be not desirable. Don't misunderstand me. So the Bible has more scriptures about not legitimate desire than the positive desire. An interesting scripture you will find in Romans 7, in Romans 7 verse 8. Romans 7, verse 8. He is talking about sin that creates not legitimate desire. Sin that creates a desire that is not positive, that is not legitimate. But I want to give also a positive impulse. We look at some very well-known scriptures from the New Testament, and maybe you look you look it up for yourselves. Um, the meaning of the pos the positive meaning of desire in the New Testament. Or what was the driving force that that um, brought men to act in a certain way? These scriptures talk about well-known stories, and we will not read them one by one, but I will summarize them. In Mark, the Gospel of Mark 2, verses 3 to 12, it's recorded the following. They come to Jesus and they bring a paralytic which is carried by four men. You know the story, the house was full and they wanted to see Yeshua and the, so they had to go through the roof. They brought the paralytic through the roof carried him and brought him through the roof to Yeshua. What was the driving force? Why did they do that? What was their desire? And then you look up in Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48. It starts 
a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She was suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years and she had spent all of her money for doctors and she could not be healed. You know what she did, this woman. She wanted to come to Yeshua when he was on his way. He was surrounded by many, many people. And this woman wanted to touch his garment. Imagine this situation. What, what would you have to do to come through this mass of people? Would you be polite and say, oh, excuse me, can I go forward? No, you would do it in a different way. And, and actually this woman was aware that she was unclean. She was not allowed to touch any man, but she didn't mind, she didn't think about this. What was her motivation? What was driving her forward to Jesus? Then you look at Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. We read about a man by the name Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. And the first verse says there was a man and he was a chief tax, collect tax collector and he was very rich. And he had heard that Yeshua was coming somewhere and because he was a little bit small, he climbed up a tree and Yeshua stopped right there. And he didn't mind what people were thinking about him. And all of these three that we have mentioned here, they not only had a pious desire or a wish, Or, or an inner longing and yearning uh, of something uh, far away. Or they had a strong longing, a strong yearning for something. Then um, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1, it says, it happened when the people um, surrounded him in order to listen to the word of God that Jesus was standing at the Lake Kinneret. The people, they were pressing around him and the object was, uh, the, the, the desire was to listen to the Word of God. We have several um, records about this. Then we have Acts chapter 13, which is um, recording the story of a man, the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man, and Saul and Barnabas, or Paul and Barnabas, were on their first journey and came to Cyprus. And there was also this um, event with the magician. And it talks about Sergius Paulus who desired, who sought to hear the word of God. He was seeking to listen to the word of God. 
Was this something wrong to hear the word of God, to desire to hear the word of God? Now we come to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, from verse 10, 10 to 17. Matthew 13, 10 to 17. Yeshua had started to talk in parables. And then, and then his followers asked him in verse 10, and the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you speak to them in parables? They asked Jesus, Read this parable, and I want to read this parable for yourself, and I want to come to verse 16. Jesus, Yeshua says to his followers, to his disciples, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and they did not hear it. What is Yeshua talking about here? What did the prophets like to desire and to hear? To desire to hear. And many righteous people, what did they desire to see and to hear? Did they want to hear what they were allowed to do and what they should not do? What they were supposed to do and what they should not do? The answer will follow soon. And now we come to the last verses. We come to the first epistle of Peter, chapter 2. First epistle of Peter, chapter 2. First Peter 2, verses 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. First Peter 2. First, it is a demand to do something. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. And verse 2. Be as newborn babies. Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. As newborn babies, desire, long for the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And in a different translation it says, as newborn babies, be as newborn babies, desire the pure milk, long for the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, and it continues um, so that you will grow in respect to uh, salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Can 
can you somehow can we somehow understand uh, what this picture means to become like newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word what does it mean to grow in respect to salvation with regard to salvation or when what does it mean salvation healing who is salvation in whom do we find salvation the Greek word um, of salvation has to do or is connected with zozo, zoter, soteria and means salvation, wholeness it actually means to become complete or to be complete whole to be whole wholeness healing and uh, the answer to all of these questions has to do with the Messiah of Israel with Yeshua after physical birth and even after the following the new birth growth is coming and for this it needs food the little baby receives milk but for those who are born again it's the word of God to create growth what should I do what should I not do or is it about the relationship with my Messiah the Messiah of Israel Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ you may remember the verse there is no salvation in anyone else only in the Messiah Jesus and even the name itself Yeshua means salvation and it's more than getting a ticket for heaven how can we complete this sermon my proposal for today you should you should desire for salvation you should long for salvation you should desire salvation and it's interesting that in second Peter 1 verse 3 if you have really tasted then the, that the Lord is gracious of loving kindness did you taste through the word of God did you taste that the Lord is of loving kindness full of loving kindness it's of course difficult to be uh, to desire strongly something what you have not tasted yet and if you think of uh, physical des uh, desires like uh, a favorable food 
you remember very well how this tastes. And this is uh, the desire to get again this taste, this good taste that you have experienced before. We can answer this question with yes or no. Or it can be, it, it may happen that we have lost the taste of his loving kindness. And I would like to pray. You can remain sitting or stand up, and we want to pray together. Heavenly Father, you have, we, you have given us your word so that we can taste that you are full of loving kindness. And I praise you for everyone who has tasted you already. And Lord, we need your help to reach out to other people. For, to reach out to people who, have, who say uh, they have never tasted you. And I pray, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to them through your wonderful word. Speak to them personally, to their needs. Reveal yourself to them, Heavenly Father, in a wonderful way. and draw those to you who have tasted you already before and to see now who see now who recognize now that they that there was something in their lives let them see that you are waiting for them with open arms and lord i thank you that you have called us <coughs> to serve each other Thank <laughs> you.